Okay, so we're looking at problem six, which says determine the points of intersection of the following system. If there is no point of intersection, explain why that must be the case. Verify each of your solutions by substituting the coordinates into both equations. So the idea here is you have one circle. This is an equation of a circle. This is an equation of a line. So it's asking you, is there some kind of like circle drawing with a line going through? And if there is, what are the inter points of intersection? Right, what's the coordinates for these two points where they intersect? So the way we do this is we start off, if to find the coordinate of where they intersect, that means both the y and the x of both equations will be exactly the same. So since you know they'll be exactly the same, you can actually plug in the y from this equation of a line into the equation of the circle. So our step one is to substitute. Okay, and we'll do that by setting up x minus, and then you plug in, oh wait, x minus 3 squared plus, and then we'll sub in the y, which is negative x plus 3. Okay, so we've subbed in y. Then after that, we'll simplify. So this becomes, it stays the same. This now becomes negative x plus 1 squared equals 4. All right, and then once we've substituted and simplified, then we go to step 2, which is to distribute, which means we're trying to get rid of the parentheses for both of these. So remember, when you square, x minus 3 squared becomes x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus the other one which is negative x plus 1 times negative x plus 1. Alright, so we got these two right here. Now we need to foil it out or distribute it out. So doing that we go x times x which is x squared. Maybe I'll put it in red actually x squared, x times negative 3, which is negative 3x, negative 3x, or negative 3 times x, negative 3x, and then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Okay? And then we'll also expand this one, or distribute this one, so negative x times negative x is positive x squared, negative x times 1 is negative x, 1 times negative x is negative x, and then 1 times 1 is plus 1. All right, we have these now. So then once we've distributed, I'm going to put slash combine like terms. So we always got to simplify by combining all the like terms. So x squared and x squared becomes 2x squared, negative x, negative x, negative 3x, negative 3x, that becomes negative 8x. Positive 9 and a positive 1, so that becomes plus 10, equals 4. All right, so we've simplified, combined all the like terms we can. We will then go to step 3, which is to set equal to 0. So in order to do that, we will minus 4 to both sides. And then that gives us, so 2x squared stays the same. Minus 8x stays the same. So then we minus 4, so this becomes plus 6 equals 0. All right, so now that we've got to this equation, this is now a quadratic. So we can either use quadratic formula or we can factor. Either one. So uh, I'm going to use quadratic formula, I think, or factoring. Let's do quadratic formula. Okay. So to use quadratic formula, I just take a look real quick. I'm going to put step four up in the corner over here as C 
solve for x. And you can do that by either factoring or quadratic formula. So the reason I'm using quadratic formula is basically because this is a 2. If this was a regular x squared, then I would probably use factoring. But just because if there's a 2, I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. But you guys know how to factor, even if there was a 2. So anyway, a, so I'm going to use quadratic formula. a is equal to 2. b is equal to negative 8. c is equal to 6. And then from here, I'll plug it into the quadratic formula. This is um, I'll do this in red. x equals negative b plus or minus square root. I'm trying not to sing, but it's hard. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. So from here, now we're going to try and solve out the parentheses first, we're, we're using a uh, order of operations, so parentheses first, so inside the square root. Um, this becomes, running out of paper here, so I'm gonna just use a sticky note. If I take the square root of negative eight squared minus four times two times six, then this becomes square root of 64 minus, uh, let's see, 8 times 6, 6 times 8 is 48. And then 64 minus 48 is, hold on, 64 minus 48 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. <clears throat> so now I can replace this whole square root with the number 4. So I can rewrite this now as x equals 8 plus or minus 4, instead of using the square root, divided by 4. Okay, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 4. Now that I have this, I just solve this twice, one using plus and one using minus. So 8 plus 4 is 12, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then 8 minus 4 is 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I should get two solutions, that's why there's a plus or a minus. You add once and solve, you subtract once and solve. Now once you have the x, remember we're trying to find coordinates, x, y coordinates, so you need to find your y's. So I'll come over to the side. I will grab the equation for y right up here for the line. y equals negative x plus 3. So once you solve for x, the fifth step is solve for y. So I take the equation, y equals negative x plus 3. I'll substitute in the 3, so y equals negative, and then put it in the first x. Negative three plus three is zero. Okay. So that means when x is three, y is zero. So my first coordinate is three comma zero. Okay, then I do it again for the other x coordinate, x equals one, so y is equal to negative x plus three. I'll substitute in the one. Negative one plus three is y equals two. And this is now our y coordinate, so our final answer here is when x is one, y is two. So our final answer for question six, the two coordinates are three comma zero and one comma two.